Yes, I can see it now. Thank you. Okay, then we're starting. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Ottoman Empire had the reputation of being the sick man of Europe. Following a century of slow decline, weakened by political instability, military defeat, civil strife and uprising by national minorities. The empire was increasingly falling under the financial control of the European powers and had lost ter territory. In 1908s, a group of young officers known as the Young Turks seized power in Istanbul. Sultan Mehmet V was installed as a figurehead in 1909. The new regime implemented a pro program of, the, of reform to modernize the outdated pol political and economic system and, and to redefine the racial character of the empire. Germany, as a support, supporter, provided significant investments. German diplomats gained influence and German officers assisted in training and reoccupying the army, despite Britain being the predominant power in the region. The economic resources of the Ottoman Empire were deplete, deplete, depleted by the cost of the Balkan Wars of 1912 and 1913, and the French, British, and Germans had offered financial aid, a pro-German faction influenced by Enver Pasha. The former Ottoman military attaché in Berlin opposed the pro-British majority in the Ottoman cabinet and tried to sec secure closer relations with Germany. The geographical position of the Ottoman Empire meant that Russia, France, and Britain had a significant interest in Turkish neutrality in the event of war in Europe. The Ottoman Empire participated in World War I as one of the central powers. The Ottoman entry into, into World War I officially began on 29 October 1914. Two German ships on 27 October, Goban and Kresla, conducted the Black Sea raid, a sortie into the Black Sea where they bombarded the Russian port of Odessa and sunk several ships. The Ottoman surface and allied demand that they expel the German missions and 31 October 1914 formally entered the war, war on the side of two central powers. <clears throat> Russia declared war on Turkey on 2 November. The next day, the British ambassador left Istanbul <clears throat> and the British naval squadron of the Çanakkale bombarded the outer defense force at Kumkale on the northern Asian coast and Sedül Habir on the south southern tip of the Elbolu Peninsula. Canal front line war with Britain. The British captured Basra in November 19. 14, and marched north into Iraq. In Italy, Ahmed Pasha was ordered to gather an army in Palestine to threaten the Suez Canal. In response, the Allies opened another front with the Battle of Yenibola. The army led by Ahmed Pasha to eject the British from Egypt was stopped at the Suez Canal in February 1915 and again the next summer. The canal was vital to the British war effort. The Ottomans were eventually de defeated, defeated due to key, key attacks by the British general Edmund Elumbay. Battle of Gelibolo or the Battle of Çanakkale. This was a campaign of the First World, World War that took place on the Gelibolo in the Ottoman Empire between 17 February 1915 and 9 January 1916. The peninsula formed the northern bank of Çanakkale, a strait that provided a sea route to the Russian Empire, one of the Allied powers during the war, intending to secure it Russia's, Russia's allies. Britain and France launched a naval attack followed by a landing on the peninsula with the aim of capturing the Ottoman capital of Istanbul. The German 
Mar Marshal Otto, Otto Liman von Sanders was assigned to defend Çanakkale in command of the 5th Army. Mustafa Kemal was given the task, task of organizing and com commanding the 19th Division at attached to the 5th Army. On 8 January 1915, the British War Council launched an operation to bombard, or bombard and take the Yelibola Peninsula with Istanbul as its it objective. British naval attacks, however, failed to break through the Chanakkale Strait, and the British decided to support their fleet with a land attack. The land campaign took place between 25 April 1915 and 9 January 1916. With his division stationed in Gelibolo, Mustafa Kemal found himself at the center of the Allies' attempts to force their way onto the peninsula. On 25 April 1915, the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps forces were to move in inland after landing their troops at Anzac Cove, but were soon met with a Turkish counterattack commanded by Mustafa Kemal. Mustafa Kemal engaged the enemy forces on the hills, held them, and retook the high ground, largely due to him and his command. The Anzac forces were contained and British land forces failed to attain their objectives. By nightfall, the Anzacs had suffered 2,000 casualties and were fighting to remain on the beach. For the following two weeks, the Allies failed to advance and lost one, one third of their force because, because Mustafa Kemal had successfully held off the Allied force, forces at John Fraile. <clears throat> The Gable campaign became a disastrous defeat for the Allies as they were pinned down by the Turks for 10 months of incessant fighting and were un unable to advance past the low lying beach of Gelibola. The Allies finally decided to call off the offensive and successfully evac evac evacuated their troops. Mustafa Kemal became the outstanding frontline commander and gained much respect from his former enemies for his uh, chivalry in victory. Mustafa Kemal's speech commemorating Mustafa Kemal's speech commemorating the loss of hundreds of thousands of Turkish and Anzac soldiers who perished during the Gelibolu campaign is inscribed on a monument at Anzaco. Those heroes who shed their blood and lost their lives, you are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us, where they lie side by side here in this country of ours. You, the mothers who send their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. And this is the respect to my magic monuments. As a result of Mustafa Kemal's success in the Battle of Çanakkale, the duration of the World War I was extended. Bulgaria joined the war alongside the Ottoman Empire. The Caucasus frontline, war with Russia. Ottoman's entrance into the war greatly increased the triple and tense military burdens. Russia had to fight on the Caucasus campaign along and and in the Persian campaign along with the United Kingdom. Ismail and Marcosha set off for the Battle of Sarkamish with the intention of recapturing both Batum and Kars, overrunning Georgia and occupying northwestern per Persia and the oil fields. <laughs> Fighting the Russians in the Caucasus, the Ottomans lost ground and over 100,000 soldiers in a series of battles, 60,000. Ottoman soldiers were frozen due to heavy winter conditions, cold starvation, etc. In 1916 and 1917, on the Mush Bitli section of the front, the Russians captured Erzurum, Mush Bitli, Trabzon, and Erzincan. 
Mustafa Kemal Atatürk was assigned to this front and Mushan with this were recaptured. After the Bolshevik Revolution, Russia withdrew from the war and the Ottomans and Russia signed the Brest-Litovsk Treaty. Brest-Litovsk. Cars, Ardahan and Bottom were taken back. Russia was pulled out of war and Caucasian front was closed. Empire in home front. The war tested the limit the empire's relations with its Arab population. During the war, Britain, Britain had been a major sponsor of Arab nationalist thought and ideology, primarily as a weapon to use against the power of the empire. Sheriff Hussein Ibn Ali rebelled against the Ottoman rule during the Arab Revolt of 1916. In August, he was replaced by Sheriff Haidar, but in October, he proclaimed himself king of Arabia and in December was recognized by the British as an independent ruler. There was little the empire could do to influence the course of events other than try to prevent news of the uprising, to prevent, prevent it to demoralize the army or act as a propaganda for anti Ottoman Arab fiction. On 3 October 1918, forces of the Arab revolt in, entered Damascus accompanied by British troops, ending 400 years of open rule. <clears throat> Armistice of Modros. The Armistice of Modros concluded on 30 October 1918, ended the hostilities at noon the next day in the Middle Eastern theater between the Ottoman Empire and the Allies of World War I. It was signed by the Ottoman Minister of Marine Affairs, Raouf Bey, and the British Admiral, Summerist Arthur Gough Calthoff. As part of several conditions to the armistice, the Ottomans surrendered their remaining garrison outside Anatolia, as well as granted the Allies the right to occupy forts controlling the Straits of the Dardanelles and the Bosporus, and the right to occupy the same in case of disorder any Ottoman territory in the event of the threat to their security. <clears throat> the Ottoman army, including the Ottoman Air Force, was demobilized and all ports, railways, and other strategic points were made available for use by the Allies. In the, in the Caucasus, the Ottomans had to retreat to with within the previous borders between the Ottoman and the Russian empires. The armistice was followed by the occupation of Istanbul and the subsequent part partition partitioning of the Ottoman Empire. The Allies did not wait for a peace territory for claiming the Ottoman territory. Just uh, 13 days after the armistice of Modros, a French brigade entered the Constantinople on November 12, 1918. The first British troops entered the city on November 13, 1918. Early in December 1918, Allied troops occupied sections of Constantinople and set up an Allied military administration. Results of the occupation. First, Ottoman parliament was collapsed. Uh, third, Turkish people in Istanbul started migrating to Anatolia when they saw there was no hope for salvation in Istanbul. People were being dissatisfied with the Istanbul government when Grand Ferit Pasha became a head of government. It set ground for the Turkish national movement and the Turkish war of independence. In August 1919, John de Borek, John de was very worried by the defined mode of Ottoman parliament. When 1920 arrived, he was concerned by reports that substantial stocks of the arms were reaching Turkish revolutionaries. <clears throat> Conference of London, February 1920. John de Robeck reminded the participants that Anatolia was moving into a resistance stage. There were arguments of national fact uh, circulating and if these were solidified, it would take a longer time and more resources to handle the partitioning of the Ottoman Empire. He tried to persuade the leaders to take quick action and control the Sultan and the pressure the rebels. Nationalist Turkish sentiment rose in the Anatolian Peninsula, engendering the establishment of the Turkish national movement. During the Turkish War of Independence, Mustafa Kemal put forth the nation that there would be only one way for the liberation of the Turkish people in the aftermath of World War I, namely through the creation of independent so uh, sovereign Turkish state. 
the Turkish national movement in Anatolia culminated in the formation of a new Grand National Assembly by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and his colleagues. On 1 of November 1922, the Grand National Assembly declared the Ankara government to be the Turkish government and abolished the Sultanate. On 17 November 1922, Mehmet VI, while dating the last Ottoman Sultan, departed from Istanbul aboard the British ship HMS Malaya. Early pressure role in insurgency, April June 1920. The British argued that the insurgency of the Turkish revolutionaries should be suppressed by local forces in Anatolia. With the help of British training and arms, in response to a formal British request to, the Istanbul government appointed the extraordinary Anatolian general Inspector Süleyman Şefik Paşa and the new security army Kuwait to enforce the central government control with British support. The British also supported local guerrilla groups in the Anatolian heartlands with money and arms. You can see the wars. Western activity stage, Greco-Turkish War, 1919-1922. As soon as grey forces landed in Smyrna, a Turkish nationalist opened fire prompting brutal reprisals. Greek forces used Smyrna as a base for launching attacks deeper in Anatolia. Mustafa Kemal refused to accept even a temporary Greek presence in Smyrna. Eventually, the Turkish nationalists, with the aid of the Kemalist armed force, defeated the Greek troops and population and pushed them out of Smyrna and the rest of Anatolia. End of the occupation of Istanbul. The success of the Turkish national movement against the French and Greeks was followed by their forces threatening the Allied forces at Chanak. The British decided to resist any attempt to penetrate the natural zone of the Straits. Mustafa Kemal was persuaded by the French to order his forces to await any incident at Chanak. Nevertheless, the Chanak cried. Uh, Crisis nearly resulted in hostilities, these being, these being awaited on October 11, 1922. When the armistice of Mudanya was signed, bringing to end of the Turkish War of Independence, the handling of this crisis caused the collapse of David Lloyd George Ministry on October 19, 1922. Turkish troops entering Istanbul. After the end of the Turkish Armenian, Franco Turkish, Greco Turkish Front, the Treaty of Series was abandoned, and the Treaties of Kars, October 1921, and the Peace Treaty of Lausanne, July 1923, were signed. The Allies left Anatolian Eastern Trace. With the establishment of the Turkish National Movement, the partition of the Ottoman Empire and the evolution of the Sultanate, the Ottoman era and the empire come, came to an end. And with Atatürk's reforms, the Turks created the modern secular nation state of Turkey on the polit political front. A republic was proclaimed on October 19, uh, 29, 1923 in the new capital of Ankara. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk was elected as the first president. On 3, 3 of March 1924, the Ottoman Caliphate was officially abolished and the last Caliph was exiled. <coughs> this is the end of our presentation. That was really good. Well, uh, Thank you. What, what, did you guys, what did you guys learn from doing this? World War One. <laughs> yeah. What did we have remind our history again. Yeah, uh, uh, we're going to. Uh, the, we have to do this with Australia. We're taping this part. We're doing it with Australian people, and then I'll send you back this when we put it together. But we're doing it Thursday afternoon, so you can have it Friday morning to look at class. And they're going to do it from the Australian side, and uh, it'll be kind of interesting. And I would love to eventually have to do something with the British and the German 
schools because that'd be kind of cool too. Um, I didn't realize, well, I mean, I, I watched enough Turkish television to realize how bad it was uh, during the occupation afterwards. And I've read the transcripts of some of the kangaroo courts and stuff that uh, put some of the people to uh, in prison, which was really bad. Uh, what's Anaturk's, uh, what, what, how is he considered, I see his picture all the time. Uh, how is he, con how is he considered in Turkey today? Uh, Can you repeat? Yeah, uh, the, the father of the Republic of Turkey, how is he considered today in Turkey? He's still uh, considered as the father of the Republic of Turkey. People love, love him and we miss him every day. Okay, when you are taught about the Ottoman Empire, what, what, is, what are some of the highlights that you're taught about? <laughs> Uh, we are shown that the Ottoman Empire was really nice to its citizens, so that's one of the most important things. Okay, and uh, when you're taught in your history classes, the Treaty of SARS and some of the other treaties that came at the very end, were they pretty, when the Ottomans um, signed the ceasefire on October 30th, they were thinking it was a ceasefire. They weren't thinking that they were giving up all their land, were they? I think they wouldn't uh, expect the invasion. They just wanted the ceasefire, but the Allied forces, England and French, uh, invade them and they didn't. They, they couldn't no other do nothing. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. I, I was just saying, it just, it's part of history that here in the United States, we just kind of really gloss over a whole lot. You know, uh, you, you hear that uh, the war was, you know, kind of strange, but um, I don't think we get both sides of the story. And at the Battle of Gallipoli, uh, I can't pronounce the Turkish name for it, but uh, how, that's a name. Okay, that's a major success for um, uh, the, the gentleman that ends up finding Turkey, wasn't it? Wasn't that one of the major successful yeah. battles during the war for you? Yes, it is one of the most successful battles in the war. It's prevent so many things. Yes. Yeah, uh, and it, today uh, I, I've seen several documentaries and stuff where people are still discovering uh, artifacts and stuff from uh, uh, from different things. And if you just saw the terrain, that terrain is really hard. I don't know how anybody would be able to rush up a hill and try to charge fortified people and, and figure they're going to try to do something when you have automatic weapon fire on you. I, I don't see how that made any sense at all, but that, that's just, uh, I guess that's something for the historians to look at. Uh, when do you guys get out of school? When's your last day of school? Almost 45 minutes. No, no, I, I don't mean that by me. When's your last day of school this for the school year? It's uh, the first week of uh, July. Wow. Sorry, June, June. June. Yeah, June. okay. And, and when do you, uh, are you, are all, are all you guys graduating or are any of you coming back for next year? No, no, no. I will be graduating next year. You next coming back? Year. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Well, and, uh, go ahead. We are 10th grade. Yes, we are 10th grade. And we have two more years? Two more years. Oh my gosh, that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, well, I was going to say one more thing. Uh, I, I won't. I won't ask. But uh, the people from Australia uh, have uh, interviewed a couple of their um, oh, uh, relatives that had died. Well, of course, they're passed on. But I mean, they've, re they've had quite a few people that you're going to see some information on that have actually fought in that battle. So they're going to. Tell from a perspective of losing some people, uh, some of their family members. 
I guess be great grandparents or something like that now. Uh, but that seemed to be uh, pretty heavy handed because uh, the Anzac troops were the ones that were the British used all their colony, colonial, they didn't use their own forces as much. So it's kind of yeah. an odd deal. Uh, in how is Ankara, how far is Ankara from Bursra? How far is it? Um, it's about five hours with car. No, no. It takes five hours. Okay, and how far are you from Istanbul? It's two hours by car. Oh, wow. And, uh, did they want to change the capital because Bursa was too connected to the Ottoman Empire or what? I think they changed the capital because uh, Ankara is in the heart of Anatolia and okay. it's very important for us. Okay, and then a uh, uh, couple more things. How comfortable are you with English? Uh, we see it as a normal country as other countries. Okay, I mean the English language itself. How did you learn to speak English so well? Uh, we have been learning almost, we are 10 or 9. So yeah, we started been at many years. fourth grade at school. If oh, you wow. want to do something, then you learn it. We have an interest in English, so we learned it. We have been speaking English almost 9 years. Oh, wow. And what other like do you speak other languages besides Turkish? Yes, we are being taught German. But oh, wow. not, not really learned it at school. Yes. Oh wow, that's really neat. And uh, in the Turkish, have you studied much about Turkish migrations from uh, like uh, Mongolia or other places? Do you know where uh, okay, well, I thought maybe we talked about Turkish language. Have you ever talked to anybody from Abrajan or Beku, Bekau, how you pronounce it? Okay, my, my question is this, is Turkish change as, as, as the Turks migrated from the east? I understand like people in Turkmenistan and other places will speak a Turkish, but it's a little bit different than the Turkish you'll speak. Is that true? Uh, if we talk to a person from Azerbaijan, <laughs> Yeah. Azerbaijan, we can understand them, uh, but it's like we can't understand some words. For example, when you talk to someone from Australia, you can understand what they're saying, but there are some certain words that you can't understand because of uh, the place they live in. They develop some other words. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you, you'll find out, that, of course, I, I speak with a bad Texas accent. But the, the people in uh, Australia will speak with such a, a really nice uh, Australian accent. It, it, it does make a lot of difference. They keep on saying, well, you talk too fast. Well, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I, I did not know so many people spoke Turkish. And the Turkish language is spread out so far. I mean, all the way from almost the parts of China to uh, west or in the Balkans where you guys are at. Because I think your teacher family originally came from Bulgaria. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to learn Turkish? Oh, really? Would you like to learn Turkish? Oh, yeah. I, I, I told you before, I, I wish I could speak Turkish more. Uh, I, I can speak just a few, like, uh, really weird words, or I'll know what they are because I, I watch no, enough Turkish can you tell some of them? <laughs> well, some of what? The, the TV shows or the... Uh, or the some of the words. Some of the words. Some of oh. the words. Uh, Merba. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't say it right. I'm sorry. Okay. It's sort of right. It's okay. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I've just been fascinated. I, I did not know that... Um, I always thought, well, I don't know how to say this nicely, but I did not know that my relative, I had so many relatives that were Turkish until I started doing uh, a lot more um, um, family history. And then I find out that, oh my gosh, about half my family on my dad's side came from different uh, Turkish tribes. Uh, and then that would include, you know, uh, 
And then I had some of my, and then they had, as strange as it is, so many people intermarry. And uh, my family's been around Anatolia for probably 25, 3,000 years. So, you know, I, I guess some of my family was already in Anatolia, and then some of the family came and, and married into that family and then ended up coming to Europe, and here I am in Texas. But I, I've always been fascinated. And I've been really – I haven't been able to watch the new uh, Mehmet, uh, the one with the, the guy from Isa. Uh It's on Canal Channel, I think it is. Uh, and it's got uh, some really good actors, but it's about Mehmet the Conqueror. Yes. Yeah. Is that good? Do you ever watch any uh, serial shows or no? I don't. Know. I watched them. I oh, watched you them. Oh, okay. Some people, you know, I talk to some people say they're afraid to admit they actually watch. But I don't know how historical they are, but they are they are pretty good entertainment. I mean, you can I think you can learn culture at least from our aspect, uh, highly tainted, I guess. They have some small mistakes, but they are, I think. Yeah, I, I saw part of Magnificent Century, too. I thought that was pretty good. I, I don't know that, what Sultan that was. And then I watched one about the, the last Sultan, but we, we in a, they didn't have the English subs after about, I think, by episode 12 or 13, so it kind of dropped off. I don't really know what happened, but it talks about the heavy-handedness of uh, – of the English and the Russians and the Germans in the, from 1870 on. It was really pretty bad, I think. Is your, are all your families from Bursra for a long time or no? Yeah, mine are in Bursa for a long year. Uh, she's from Bulgaria. I'm not from Bulgaria. Our family is from Bulgaria. Oh, because really? They, Where? Live in Bulgaria. Oh, really? Wow. And uh, well, I, I, my family goes back to Bulgaria when the Bulgars first came, I guess with the Huns, but they go back to around 400 and something AD in Bulgaria. And then uh, my last uh, relative was, uh, I had some kings and stuff in Bulgaria in about 1200 and something. But yeah, I really like Bulgaria. We used to talk to some schools in Sofia, which was really nice. But uh, where were you? Where did you live in Bulgaria? Where's your family from? I have no idea. They came here when they were really young. Yeah, uh, I did not know this. I, I guess I, I'm just learning all kinds of stuff. But uh, you know, about a hundred years ago, Turkish uh, Turkey was not a large country until I, after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, and all of a sudden it's gone from uh, like 10 million to almost 90 million. So a lot of people from different parts of empire come back to live in in Turkey. I think. Yeah, there are really different people here. It's a very uh, mixed group of, uh, of, uh, of people, correct? Yes, yes, it is. Now, is your Turkish any different than the Turkish of the uh, other students? I mean, is your family's Turkish any different from no. Bulgarian? Okay. Uh, my parents grew up in Turkey, so they can speak Turkish like the other people. Uh, what uh, what type of movies are really popular right now in in Turkey? Infinite War. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, 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 I won't ask. Uh, okay, uh, what type of uh, Oh, how are you going to put it this way? What type of expectations do you have for your future when it comes to uh, going to college and stuff? What are your plans? I want to be a lawyer in the future and I want to be in a great university. Uh, I want to study law and that's all. But, and the most important one is I want to be so rich. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> really. And then greatly <laughs> Oh, wow. Do you want to live in Bursary? You want to go to Istanbul or where you want to go? Um, I want to go abroad because uh, I don't want to live in Turkey, but I have to live in Turkey, Turkey because of my job. 
I will learn a lot uh, in Turkish, so I have to learn Turkey. Uh, maybe some will make it good, so I don't know. I don't know to speak, so. But I will learn to learn Turkish. <laughs> Yeah. Is, is there uh you're gonna be talking I want to be a doctor in future. You wanna be a what? Hmm? Uh, say that again. What did you want uh we lost a little okay. okay, what what did you say you wanted to be? Yeah, I want to be a doctor. A doctor? Oh what type of medicine do you want to practice? Uh I didn't say it. You gonna you going to have a practice in uh, Turkey or probably Turkey? That'd be good. <laughs> now, uh, what what would you like to say to the kids from Australia when when they get to see this? What would you like to any questions you'd like to ask them or anything you want to talk to them about? Uh, they should learn their history very well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's uh. Uh, I think that's true with everybody. I, I just don't think we really know history as much as, as we think we do. And you may, be, you may be surprised to know that both in Turkey, and, I mean, in Australia and Canada, we have an awful lot of uh, expat Turkish uh, people that have migrated to, uh, we have a lot, uh, we talked to school in Toronto, we have a lot of people from Turkey. Your parents are Turkish. Can you repeat your question again? Well, uh, yeah, I was saying that we have a lot of uh, students that, that are from Turkey originally, their family was, or they moved to Australia, or they moved to Canada. And uh, they would, they're, they're going to be watching this, and they're going to be very envious of uh, not only your talents, but you know the ability. You were saying you'd like to live abroad. Well, some of those people would like to live back home. So it's a. Uh, I think everybody wants to live in a different place. Yeah, most people want to live in a different place. Yeah, you know, it, it, I always say, well, it's it's. Uh, I always want to move away, but then they, they they try to go back, you know, to where it was. I know there's quite a few people that are like that. So on average day, what, what, how much homework do you have on an average day? How much work? Eight hours. Eight hours. We are at school for eight hours and then we go home and do our homeworks. Yeah, how, long, how much time do you have to spend on homework after school? It depends on the subject, but usually one or two hours. Okay. I, 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 and do you ever have uh, work that you have to do? What, what's your hardest class? Most difficult class? I think it's physics. Wow. You'll yeah. agree. Yeah. Physics in 10th grade. Wow, that's really good. And math is hard too. And math is really hard. But if you study, it is. Uh, getting easy, easier. <laughs> and uh, how, what kind of pressure is there to make grades in, in your school? How, is there a lot of pressure to do really well to get into college and stuff? Yes, yes there is a lot of pressure to do well at school. And uh, your parents' expectation, your parents expect you to make like straight A's and, and get into a really, really good school? Yes. I think, I think yes. it's not about grades, but we have to learn the subjects because we are going to take the university exams. Mm -hmm. so but our grades affect our university exams. And and one thing would be kind of and one thing would be kind of interesting to know how much what does. Is, yeah, how much, is so. okay. How much does college or university cost? Uh, there are some state universities, uh, there are some private universities. So if you go to a state university, you won't pay any money for education. If you get a high score in exams, you get a scholarship from the private school. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it's unbelievable here in the United States. Uh, some of the kids are spending forty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year to go to college, and it's, it's extremely expensive. There, there's some people that end up graduating from school owe two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars in debt, and then uh, they have to pay like a, a huge mortgage just to pay off their college loans. Is that any state school in your county? Uh, our, our state schools here in Texas would run you around $30,000 a year. I don't know what that is in Turkish lira, but it's... Uh, state schools, I think that's better. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's very hard. And kids spend an awful lot of time trying to get scholarships. And you can't... You, when I was... a when I was your age and getting to go to college, you could literally work your way through college and pay for it, but today you can't. It, it's becoming a real crisis here in the States. So it's really kind of interesting. Well, I will try to write back to your teacher. I think uh, I will send this to you on uh, Thursday evening so we can put both of them together so you can see what the people in Australia will present. And uh, we thank you so much. That was really wonderful today. I really learned quite a bit. Thank you. Mike, can I ask you one question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was... Are you watching MBA? Am I what? Are you watching MBA? What's the MBA, the yeah. I watched a little bit of the MBA. Oh, really? Yeah. Which team do you support? Yeah, basketball is very large in Turkey, I know. Uh, we had uh, several of our people on our staff. One of our staff people that was used to be here for a long time, she played in a league, and then one of our uh, former students actually played in a league in Turkey. Uh, and uh, I'm not as familiar as I, as I could be, but I, I did follow a little bit, maybe like nine, 10 years ago, where they were talking about uh, some of the teams that uh, from, I forget what the name of the, city was um, but I've known uh, some of the schools they will wear NBA jerseys all the time to your school you know and people it will dress up now where we're at we're probably I live about 60 miles from San Antonio so a lot of people are Spur, Spur fans even though the Spurs didn't quite show up this year uh, I don't <laughs> Hey, uh, who's your favorite team? San Antonio Spurs. Oh yeah, I, I mean, if they got, if they would have had Leonard in there this year, I guess they would have done a lot better. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, San Antonio Spurs. I used to have uh, posters up in my room when they were uh, doing really well. But yeah, Spurs, a uh, real good team. Uh, they used to play pretty good basketball because they play as a team, but now they're kind of, you know, I think everything changes just a little bit. Yes, ma'am. And Mike, can I ask you something too? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Which subject do you teach to students at school? Oh, I teach uh, a government class. I teach a political science class. I teach a uh, speech and debate class. Uh, we do a lot of uh, moot courts uh, where we do trials and, and different things. And then, um, but I'm certified to be everywhere from a superintendent, principal, counselor. Well, I was a counselor for a while. And then I, I could teach uh, PE and uh, I coached for eight years. I was a principal for nine years. I've been back in the classroom for about uh, 19 years. I really enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy the distance learning part myself. I, I love doing stuff like this. Now, unfortunately, uh, I guess my passion to try to find out about my relatives started getting me to uh, try to contact countries and stuff. And then I started about 11 years ago with uh, a school in Turkey. And then uh, we've been doing stuff with uh, people ever since. I guess I've been working with your teacher for maybe 10 years now. How old are you? <laughs> How old am I? Uh, I'm really old. So, so old that I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I guess that's the old I could have fought in World War One. No, I, I was just joking. Man. <laughs> Don't say that. That's really bad. But no, uh, yeah, it's uh, been it's been pretty uh, fascinating. Uh, believe it or not, back when we had Skype, I, I may have shared the story before, but there was a school in uh, Ankara. And we were, I have, I teach a lot of students who do not, uh, are not English native speakers. And they, in six weeks, they were trying to teach us Turkish and we were hopelessly lost. And they were, uh, we were trying to teach them English. They caught on to English to where they were, they were actually speaking English probably better than my students were in six weeks. That's a, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, that the Turkish education system is really, really very, very good. You guys are very lucky to have. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm trying to put this very diplomatically nice. Uh, there's a lot of things I really envy that you guys are going through. I, I think you do have, for the resources and stuff that you have, uh, you're doing a really, really good job with what they have. A lot different in the states. We we have a tendency to dump in all kinds of money and not produce a whole lot of results. It seems like you guys are producing some really good results with uh, not near the amount of money. We don't even have that. Yeah. 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 literally changes in years, in a few years. Each year it changes, and I hate it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think you have that no matter where you're at. Uh, you know, I, there's no real perfect, you know, world. I mean, uh, I remember, I don't, know, I don't know if I want to even say this. Uh, I remember a, a time where we couldn't even communicate with some of the people from Turkey because the government had, uh, had stopped, you know, allowing this to happen. So I was really glad to see that, you know, they're not doing it anymore. So that's really good. I know there's certain sensitivities on stuff, and I'll try not to, to mention it. But I, I, I'm really am fascinated. Uh, you know, there's a lot of parallels, like I said, uh, interesting. And uh, Bursa is a beautiful city. I can see why, you know, it's, it's become a, it's a, it's a big industrial center too, isn't it? Don't you have a lot of industries and stuff around in in your city? Businesses? Yeah, I, I said, don't you have a quite a bit of businesses in your city? I mean, a, a pretty big industrial. Now, how far away are you? How, how far away are you from the mountains? They are pretty close, I think, <laughs> as a city. There are lots of mountains in Bulgaria. But our school isn't close to mountains. Okay. But he lives very close to mountains. She lives very close to the mountains. So. And uh, what's your school noted for? What, 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 what's, what, what is... What are some of the things your school is, does really well? Um, I think social activities. Our school is really great with social activities and connecting with other people. Yeah, I would say that for sure. And you have really good teachers too, don't they? Don't you? Yes, we have lots of great teachers. We, are, we love our young teachers. Yeah, and, and all your teachers deserve a big raise too, don't they? Yes. And I want to thank you to study with us and do conferences with us. Uh, we can improve themselves with these uh, things. Mm -hmm. And and what other what other countries do you work with? Uh, we worked with Quan Timur. We uh, did the Quan Timur project, climate project, and we are going to do a Skype meeting with Spain this Friday. Oh wow, that'll be good. Yeah, I I don't really, you know, Skype is just not really what it used to be. What do you mean? 
Well, Skype at one time was the Cadillac or the the best uh, of the distance, you know, things today. I, I just don't really think the Skype voice is still pretty good, but I just don't think I, I like Zoom or I like other venues a lot better than Skype. And then some of the things about Skype, they still have this mystery Skype, which I, I find hard to believe, but you call up somebody and they and you guess where they're from. Well, you know, that's kind of a... Uh, I think you could do a lot more stuff than that. I'm trying to get you guys to eventually try to do a trial with us. Yeah, I'd like to try to see if we could actually have like a, a moot court where you would represent somebody, we would represent somebody, and we have a judge there. And, uh, you know, we could try to argue. It's, it's a lot of fun. Like a debate? Yeah, it's like a debate, but uh, it, you would be, uh, well, we could do a historical figure or we could even do, um, it, it would be kind of interesting, but I mean, like we could take a, a famous trial even in Turkey if you want to. And somebody be on one side, somebody be on the other side, and we'd have some real lawyers that would ask you questions when you when you try and defend your person. So it's... Uh, it's uh, kind of a fascinating deal, but it's, it's a way to learn history a little bit different. It's also a good way to learn English. Uh, it would be great. Yes, we would join, but uh, you have to let me know. I messaged you this conference, so you would, if you want to do this, then you can message me on Facebook. Yeah, I will, I will message you. Uh, we have one would be really nice, but I'm not so sure. I, I think it's too um, political that I don't really want to put you guys in jeopardy. Uh, so uh, I, that's all the sensitivity I'll, I'll t say about that. But uh, I, you know, I would like to maybe even try to do one about, you know, if I could find something about the end of the Ottoman Empire or something and we could defend the uh, Sultan or, or something like that. If somebody, you guys, you know, we could try to do something to where it wouldn't be, um, uh, it would be kind of interesting. I don't. I don't want to. Do, you know, we have one where we have one with Harry Truman bombing the uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and then we have to defend uh, uh, Harry Truman, the president, and then you guys could attack him for being a, um, you know, uh, um, a genocide or whatever, killing people needlessly. You know. There's stuff you can do in history which is not too terribly bad, but it makes people try to think a little bit more all the way through. I'll try to find, if you can think of a topic we could do. Uh, there was a, a pretty famous, uh, there's some British trials that were just horrible uh, in, in 1919 or so, but I don't think that would be too appropriate. So I'll try to think of something different. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see you guys later then. Thank you. Okay,